Welcome back to Kevin's European Garage, and today I'm going to be changing the rear brakes on this 2014 Mini Cooper Countryman S All 4. So here it is. This is the brake setup I'm going to be using on the rear of the car. Just like on the front that I did in my previous video going back months ago, I'm going to be using Zimmerman rotors, which is pretty much the standard for every BMW, which they're great rotors. And the kit that I also got from FCP Euro includes rear sensor, new bolts to uh, hold the uh, rotors onto the hub, and the Techstar brake pads comes also with uh, new bolts to hold on um, the caliper to the hanger on the slides new shims and it also comes with the uh, grease for the slides so this is pretty much everything you need in a kit so when i bought the kit i got the front and the rear so i got the whole setup for the whole car and now i'm just finally getting to the rear so the fronts really needed it at the time the rears weren't so bad so uh, i was just kind of holding off on doing the rears but now it's time to do the rears now i got some time and uh, i'm ready to go so let's get started okay. so i have the wheel off on this side it's just on the passenger side and on the passenger side is where the brake wear sensor is located here it goes into the back of the caliper and we follow this cable all the way up it goes all the way across on top of the control arm and then underneath to the car over here so this is where we're going to change it. So we just got to follow it all the way back. Make sure we're changing the right one because there's two on here. You got one for the wheel speed sensor and you got one for the brake caliper uh, for the brake wear sensor. We'll first do that by popping it off. The bleed valve. Popping these clips over here. Best to come in at the side. Just lift them out. Like I said, there's two of them. They pretty much look identical for the most part. Same round plug. See here, after falling all the way back, there's the one with the white plug. So now let's take this off. Here's a little tab, push it in. And now we can easily remove the caliper off the hanger. Okay, so let's get this caliper off over here. In order to get the slide, the bolts off, this is a 15 on the inside to hold this still. You're gonna have to hold it still as you try to get this thing off. And this is a 13 on the outside. Unfortunately, my wrench is too wide to really fit in there. So you're gonna have to loosen up a little bit, put some pressure in, and eventually you'll be able to get it into the hold it down to Keep it still to get it off the rest of the way. We're just gonna break the top one free. Let's get the bottom one. Again, this is a 13 millimeter and a 15 millimeter. I'm not using impact because I don't want to strip it or anything like that. Don't worry about stripping these bolts because these are going to get replaced. But you don't want to worry about, you don't want this thing to accidentally spin on there and strip out this. There we go. A little rusty, so sometimes it'll fit on right away. You have to spin it a little bit until it gets on there. All right, now we can slide the caliper off. The e brake is part of the caliper, and we'll be compressing the caliper before we put that thing back on again. And looking up, you can just kind of slide it up and put it onto the side over here for the time being, and it's just fine. So you can see, I have plenty of meat on these pads, and it wasn't the pads that were the problem, it was the rotors. And uh, this car sat on the lot for a while before we bought it years ago, and the, the rust on the rotors is pretty bad. And uh, when it gets like that, it just gets worse and worse over time, and right now it's pretty bad in the back. It was really bad in the front. And it was pretty bad in the back, so I just decided that we're just going to replace everything. Okay, next we're going to remove the hanger, and that uses an inverted Torx. E14 inverted Torx. All 
All right, and that's the hanger. And here are those inverted Torx bolts. Okay, so let's uh, remove the rotor. And this uses a six millimeter bolt that holds the rotor to the hub. This bolt will get replaced. And this is not gonna come off, so we'll lightly tap it with a hammer. Like you see, this hub is not in bad shape, but we're still gonna clean it off anyways with a quickie tool. Sand it down, make sure everything is good. Get any of the little bit of rust that's off on here. A nice clean surface to start with to put a little bit of anti-seize on there. And you can do this with either a quickie tool like this, or you can do it with a wire brush, whatever you got laying around. It's just a good, good habit to get into cleaning this thing off before you put new rotors on. I like to put a little bit of anti-seize on here just to kind of give it a little cover. Not too thick. This gives enough on there just so that it doesn't let the thing get any more corrosion. Okay, next is a rotor. Here's our nice Zimmerman rotors. Line it up. Put our bolt in and drop our bolt. Put her bolt back in again. I'm not worried about the torque on this, as long as it's tight. You know, this thing is just there to hold it in place for when you're taking off the wheel, so the thing doesn't move around. All right, so now the next thing we gotta do is we gotta clean off the hanger. So, so here's the hanger. This kit comes with new shims, so these nasty shims are gonna go. All right, now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take a brush we're going to clean out inside here. I'm doing this a little backwards so you can see it. That's what I do with all of them. Get rid of any corrosion. Cleans off any, any lubricant that might be there. Because I mean that stuff is going to be really dirty. I just give it a quick brush everywhere. Get anything that's loose off of there. Uh, for now, we're gonna re put that back in there and reseal it, anyways. Yeah, in there. You don't want to get the dust in there. See, it's pretty good. It's like it's pretty clean of anything that could get in the way. Rag. Two quick white. Those are thrown out. All right, let's pull the slides up. Just gonna clean that off. We'll put some new lube on there. Techstar lube. All right, the caliper's redone. Well, sorry, the caliper hanger, the hanger's redone. Now to put new, shim, new shims on. All right. So this hanger is all set, and now we can bolt the hanger back up to the uh, to the knuckle back there. We're ready to go. But before we do any of that stuff, we are definitely going to be putting on the rear brake wear sensor. Easily just slides into here, like such. And that's it. That's just a wear sensor. This go this is goes on the inboard pad. Here's the outboard pad. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that Techstar lube and we're gonna 
lube up this portion of the pad so it goes into the shims easier and slides back and forth no problem. Don't need a lot because you don't want to get any accidentally onto the rotor. You just need a little bit so it just slides back and forth. I need that part really right there. That's it. Not even that far. Just keep pull this over there. There you go. Again, right here. All right, so the brake pads and the hanger are set up. So now we can sell the hanger and then we can put the brake pads on. I don't know if you can hear it on the video, but man, my kids and the neighbor kids, they're going crazy out there. So lucky that I got kids in the neighborhood for my kids to play with. Those are just hand tight. Now I'm going to torque those down. Oh, Jesus. It's hard to get leverage when you're on your side like this. All right. All right, next thing to do is we're going to put on the brake pads. Sideways like such. There we go. Now the next thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to compress this caliper. In order to do that, we need a special tool. And this is a special tool. I mean, it's not really that special. It's just a block with a bunch of nubs sticking out of it. And all we gotta do is just we gotta tighten this thing in and push at the same time. Sounds easy. It really is relatively easy until you try to film it at the same time. Making sure you try to get in there. Right, let's try this again. Here we go. I think I got a good angle now. Let's see, let's twist it, push in at the same time. I should just go in. There we go. A little bit to get started now it's going in just fine and every once in a while you get something like this that happens bubbles out like this easiest way to do it is just kind of give it a little pull sometimes and it goes right back in again no problem all right now we take our brake sensor line pull it through the center of the caliper and go on Put it on over here. Put our new bolts in. New ones are also a 13 millimeter. And they got some thread locker on it. So you're only gonna be able to put it down so far without having to use that wrench on the slide itself. This one went fine. Get that 15 on there, like last time. And kind of just like, I just kind of like hold it in place just enough to get it tightened up. All right, that's tight. You don't want to get that thing stuck in there. Yep, yeah, there you go. All right, and these get torqued 22 foot pounds. All right, now that we got this done, it's time to reinstall the sensor. So let's get that going. First trip is up and underneath the blue cap and around this over here. It's 
to make sure this thing only goes on one way. And I believe it does, so we should be all set. I just have to get in the right way. It goes this way. All right, back up into where it belongs. Doing the rear is a lot easier than doing the uh, than doing the front, especially the uh, brake line, the uh, the rear sensor line. I mean. Okay, all right, now it's, uh, what's left is just to put on the wheel and uh, and then slowly put some, uh, apply some pressure to the uh, brakes to push out those pistons. We wanna do that before we even go anywhere or anything like that, so let's do that next. Five full pounds. And the last thing I do before I start the car is I just push down on the brake pedal, but I don't push it down all the way to the floor. I pump it just very lightly, just like this, a bunch of times until I have brake pressure. Because if you got a car with high mileage, what you could possibly do is push the piston farther than you've ever, ever pushed it before during your normal braking. And sometimes what happens is year after year, when that piston goes back and forth, it can put a groove into the side wall of the master cylinder. And as it goes past that groove, it can actually puncture the O-ring on the piston and then boom, you've lost your master cylinder. Trust me, you don't wanna end up doing a master cylinder for no reason at all. So thanks for watching me change the rear brakes on this 2014 Mini Cooper Countryman S. I do have some more videos coming out pretty soon. So like my video, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all soon.